Look at you. You're set up like you're doing a radio show. What the hell? That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because like I shoot a lot of my um, TikToks here at my desk, like, and I just like use this sure mic for a lot of my TikToks. So. Oh, that's cool. You got the. It looks. It lo legit looks like we're doing a, uh, a sports call-in show. All right, we're on the air today. Yeah. Uh, what's the topic of today, Anson? Today's topic on the show is. It's um, <laughs> a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be alive. Caller, <laughs> call in now. Eight hundred. Maybe that's a minority opinion at the. Yeah. At the... You can call now. Eight one six two zero eight eight three four nine. You recognize that number, by the way. Uh, no. That's your text number. I texted it last night even. Oh, that's my bad. Yeah, I hope because I texted him at 2.30 in the morning. I'm paying too much money for that number to not, <laughs> to not know what it to is. To not know, yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to have a go at this at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It is cool. So anyway, how's life? You happy, healthy? Well, first of all, am I saying your last name right? It's it's uh, Seabra, right? Seabra, yeah. Seabra. Seabra. It's Fancy. okay. Everyone, literally, I have never met a person that said my last name right the first time. Yeah. Unless they were Brazilian or Hispanic. Like, my dad is from Brazil, so it's Portuguese. Everyone thinks it's Zebra, Anson Zebra. What my fans call me Anson Zebra sometimes. <laughs> There's a running joke at when I was working as a software engineer, there was like a running joke of calling me Anson Zebra as well. He even made a little emoji on the computer. That was That's like annoying. It. Yeah, I'm used to it. I mean, you know, it's it's. I know people with more difficult to pronounce last names, so I, I'll take what I can get. Honestly, totally and I think it's unique. So, but um, no, I'm good. I'm great. I just um, I'm living out sort of in the country right now in Missouri. It's like I'm very grateful to have a lot of foliage and you know room to roam and just like living by myself and this like remodeled civil war era home like yeah just writing songs like it's cool is that where you live all the time or is that uh, just for the last year yes and no i mean like so i've lived i mean i grew up in missouri i was born in kansas i was born in wichita but i hmm. lived most of my life in the kansas city area and uh went to school in kirksville missouri which is about three hours north of here so I've lived here most of my life, and then I moved to the West Coast. Or sorry, well, I did move to the West Coast for a little, but uh, I I was a software engineer in like outside of Washington D.C. for about a year, mm. and so. But yeah, I I live around here. Um, since the music thing has picked up more, I'm I'm back and forth more to L.A. But um, I think I'll probably, depending on how the global pandemic shakes out, I'll probably move to L.A. at some point this year. Um, mm. I was gonna go. I was gonna go this mm. month. But <laughs> Yeah, but but I was Maybe like, don't. there's really no point because like it's just so right. you know it's just really not great right now. So, right, and right. I mean, the, the I think musicians are lucky uh, because at this time, because um, you know, despite everything that's go on going on, at least for me, because I can record like I can I can I was already doing everything on my own. I was writing like recording the piano, recording the vocals. So now that we're working with you know other producers and stuff, it's still easy for me to just record that stuff and then we can just send it out it's a little bit harder to collaborate uh but i think that the music industry has done a good job of sort of pivoting and just like making the yeah best. it's it seems like it's just more geography now and wherever you get your muse rather than being you know in the thick of it where it, yeah you know, i gotta be in la because that's where it's happening because it's just, yeah i mean i'm in studio city where do you when you when you're here where do you where are you usually do you... um well i was staying in west hollywood last time yeah and then actually last time I was, I was shooting a video there, I stayed um, in Huntington Beach, mm. which is, you know, not quite L.A., but um, I actually prefer much more to be by the ocean. Like I, sure. I, being in the city proper gives me anxiety. Like it's like there's just too much hustle and bustle and I, I can't. My nervous system goes crazy. Sure. And it's a lot of interference, too, if you're trying to record something. You got garbage trucks going beeping in the background at three. In the yeah. Morning. Yeah, among other things, like uh, it's 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 amazing here. It's actually it's funny because it's dead silent. I mean, I'm like I'm basically in farmland out here, so there's like there's um there's nothing making noise except for the the odd rooster. Like my neighbor has a rooster, so sometimes I don't make noise. But um, <laughs> although it's funny because yesterday or the day before, I was recording something, and to get the to get the house completely silent, I have to like I have to turn everything off, and so um including my fridge so i'm in this sunroom and there's my kitchen is right next door so i have to 
turn my fridge off. And that's so how quiet it is. It there. has to be very quiet because I use a very high end microphone, which will pick up any noise like at all. Yeah. And, uh, so I turned the breaker off on the fridge and, uh, and then it wouldn't turn back on. So I was like, Oh, great. Like, so I just didn't have a, my fridge was just out of commission for, for a day, which was great. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if I would have run into that problem in LA, although I will say like the, the studios I have recorded in LA are, are like nuclear bunkers when it, turn, when it comes to like soundproofing, like sure. I mean, cause they know it's such a busy city, you know, it's like, wow. I yeah. can't imagine it being so quiet here that I can hear my fridge because there's no chance I'm hearing that. Yeah. And, and, but I'm in studio city yeah. and so I'm right in the thick of it all, but, uh, it's got to be a little creepy there at night, though. Is it a little bit? Because the I way you describe that, it sounds like a movie. It's like I got up to record mine, I turned off the breaker, and then the lights wouldn't come back on. Mm -hmm. And then no, it's and then a guy came in with a dagger and started stabbing my face. It's funny because knock on wood, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, I have noticed that a few a few nights. I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh god, like was that a you know was that a squirrel or was that like an axe murderer or something? Right. You start to hear music in your head instead of. You yeah, know, beautiful, beautiful music you're hearing. Yeah, Danny Elfman scores and dun, dun, yep. dun, 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 like that. Uh, is that that's got to be kind of tough though because you're saying you're out there and it's so peaceful and you're away from everything. Yeah, does that alter the reality that you write about? Then does that detach you a little bit from what's going on in the world? Um, yeah, in a way. I mean, it's like um, I, I, I think it's good though because for me, um, I think people like. Like what I try to do when I'm writing my music is really, I mean, what any artist does at all is just, I really think of it more as like sort of channeling. And it's like sort of just like you, um, when you write a song, you sort of have this very vague idea of, in your mind of like what the song could be, but it's not very solid. It's very ambiguous. But this is true with any creative idea that I'm sure when you're coming up with ideas, it's the same way. You you never, it's not solid. It's just sort of a vague feeling. Mm. And then to take that vague feeling and to put it into a plan or into, into whatever it is. So I'm taking this feeling of where I am and I'm putting it into a song somehow, whatever, whatever that feels like to me, whatever, whatever words come to me. So, you know, yes, I'm out in nature. So a lot of my songs feel a little more naturally inspired, but I tend to think that people, even if they're, you know, not in this place they sort of lust well not lust is the wrong word but long for that in a way like you know that it's feeling, a fair word lust that, is a fair word for that isn't it yeah lust for serenity i guess you could say um yeah. and i think i'm just very blessed to be to be here right now and i feel like it's um it's a privilege to uh transmit that uh help transmit that but yeah you i mean um I guess, yeah, I, think, even, I guess if you get lost in that and you're like, wait, I feel detached, you can look at Instagram or something like that for five minutes and be like, oh, yeah, OK, never mind. Yeah, I mean, I guess it comes down to it's like, do I want to be attached to the the the, the um, all the horrible things happening in the world? And if I was attached, would it help me somehow? Yeah, <laughs> um, right. I mean, I, I'm certainly um, uh, a, a, like I think we should participate in the world which we live in, but I don't think um, – I don't think getting wrapped up in in negativity in my own experience as someone who used to be deeply deeply negative in a lot of ways and really? having having um transcended that in many ways I really try not to um you know feed on that too much I do get on Instagram a lot and I do see what's going on and it it is troubling but I also want to write what's true for me and what's true in my reality regardless of what's happening in the world but I also think what's sure. happening in the world is happening on a micro level in all of us. I think sure. the reason um, the collective consciousness is uh, exploding right now in a lot of ways. And I think I have, I am experiencing that in my own way. And, and, you know, it's funny because like, even though I'm, you know, in rural Missouri, it, I, I'm still uh, definitely like seeing the effects of, you know, the pandemic and, you know, like where, like, it's really, for me, it's really, I, I understand wearing a mask, but it's really depressing to wear a mask. You know, I feel like a lot of people are feeling that now, like, just like we, to feel like with another human being that you're not safe and to feel like you have to, that's just, I think we don't understand mm -hmm. the effects of that yet. You know sure. what I mean? And, that's a very dark side of it, but it's very real. Yeah. 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 And so I think there's a lot of stuff about the pandemic that 
has gotten to me. And, you know, the fact that we like, I can't hang out with my friends as much. And like, it's just, it just feels like a, a veil has been drawn over the world in a lot of ways. And that's, that's frustrating for me. But in a way, and I feel I'm getting, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I almost feel that you and I are similar in the sense that oh, it's not that much different than my life before this yeah. because I, I'm, I kind of yeah. go to I, my routine would be, I would get up, I would stop at Starbucks, yeah. go to the station in Burbank. After that, I would maybe stop at Starbucks again and then go home. And then it's like, it's not really that much different. Yeah. Is it much different for you? Or I, I just, I'm detecting that you're more yeah. of a home body as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I, I feel, I feel very lucky in that way. In fact, I, I think a lot of people my age are that way. And I was lucky in that I was basically already living like I was already I mean I was at the time I was living with my parents about a year ago but I was like I was just waking up and like you know writing or going for walks and then like you know I was very I'm I'm a super loner anyways to be honest like I am quite a loner uh so yeah you're right it has been it has been similar in a lot of ways you seem very young to know and I don't mean that condescendingly but you seem very young to be able to be in that place and mm -hmm. have the comfort that you do where did that come from yeah, that's a, it's a, it's an interesting question because when I was younger, especially in high school, like just in school up through high school, I was um really extroverted, um, just like uh very talkative, uh very I've always been really good with people. I'm always been like a communicator. Like I was like the lead in in the musical in middle middle school and. Mm. Uh, you know, I did like jazz band and did, like and and all these different things. I, I put myself out there quite a bit. And um, I, at some point when I went to college, I I really I don't know what happened, really. I think it was because I was really alone for the first time and, and like just allowed to do my own thing. I sort of mellowed out a little bit more. So I, 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 I since college, I would say I've become heavily introverted. Like mm. it's interesting that you're using the. Uh, uh, you performed on stage and you did all these things as what yeah. you explain as being an extrovert. Right. But is it? Because yeah, you're, you're on stage and you're still yeah. away from people. And maybe that actually prepared you for the the comfort in confidence in where you are now. Yeah, that's it. That's, I mean, that's a good point. Like, um, I'm basically a therapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're all therapists in yeah, a way. Sure. Um, but you're definitely right. Like, um, I think actually probably some of the best performers are like heavily introverted in fact i'm not even sure anyone is really an extrovert to be <laughs> honest i'm serious i yeah. think i think people the more work i do on myself and the more sort of because i'm deep, deeply spiritual but and so mm -hmm. the more i really like come into self-love and like just like opening to who i am I, I i feel like i i need almost nothing from 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 anyone and and i feel like i i don't know that's why i feel like and I don't want to say this because I know people that are very, very extroverted. And I know people that like really feed off of other people's energy. But I just wonder, like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Is that is that because like we need something or or that's really how we are? You know what I mean? As humans. What did you do this morning? What did you what time did you wake up? Do you wake up to an alarm? Do you just kind of wake up no. when the sun comes in? Yeah, I woke up. Uh, I woke up at like 830 this morning. Holy crap. Um, why so early? Why are you not sleeping that until like noon? You know, what's interesting is like I used to be my sleep schedule w used to be so whack. And now it's it's much less whack. Um, <laughs> I, I, I probably go to bed at like nine or 10 every night. Nine is early, wow. isn't it? Or, yeah, yeah, I don't think yeah. very many people go to bed at nine. But um, what did I do? I had some cashews for breakfast and a couple bananas. And um are you uh, uh, are you a coffee drinker? Are you popping vitamins? I don't, I don't drink. Uh, I don't drink vitamins. No, I don't <laughs> drink coffee. I used to be an enormous coffee drinker in college. I drank like six cups a day. Like I drank like a, at least a pot every day. And wow. it's how I like it's how I got through college. Basically, I like I mean, I was just always on caffeine, like just. I was super type A, like just crushing assignments, like because <laughs> at the time I was a computer science major. So I was mm. like, I was just coding all the time. And, and like, there's nothing better when you're coding than to, to be drinking coffee because it linearizes your thought. Uh, a, a health practitioner I look up to mentioned that's an effect of coffee, which makes sense because it, it sort of like I mentioned that ambiguity earlier, but it, it really just like zones you in so you could just, you know, solve problems very quickly. Or if it's writing, mm. you could just really get your ideas down quickly. Like I don't, yeah, I don't take like any stimulants or like I'm doing like a vegan diet right now. 
I have a lot of energy on that, honestly. Like I, yeah. I, I, I don't have like any dips or, or, um, I don't get tired in the middle of the day. So I is think that why when you go outside and you see trees, you actually see broccoli, like you were posting about now yeah. it's making sense. It is me. Hey, look, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Like you start to see these parallels everywhere. I mean, my yeah. mind is always, my mind is always doing that. Like I, whenever, <laughs> when, whenever, whenever I see anything, I'm always just looking for a way to sort of flip it around. Like, uh, not to toot my own horn too much, but I, I've been no, a, toot away, dude. Toot like, away, please. I, I think I'm pretty clever in a lot of ways, and so um, I've always made. I'm always making like the dumbest puns. Like, I guess you don't have to be that clever to make dumb puns, but like, I, I think puns. I've always been so punny because there's something so simple but potent about like a good pun to me. It's like um, wordplay is just so powerful, and and uh, it really can can catch people off guard if you do it correctly. You're 26, right? Yeah. And you're probably not what you imagined 26 to be, even when you were 10 or 15. No, no, definitely not. It's funny because I used to think your 20s were like the best years, <laughs> no. but now, but now I'm realizing there, it's just there's. It, first of all, for me, they were very painful in a lot of ways. It's just a lot of self discovery. But mm -hmm. uh, the 20s are, it's like the first time you even get a chance to to know yourself or like to 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 do anything in the world that's not just set in front of you like okay here do this next year do this this is what society wants you to do do this and then and then you finally get out in the open world and you're like oh my god i could do anything this is horrifying like i have to i have to make it happen like <laughs> yeah it can be very scary let's talk about your song i don't want to keep you on too long i want to talk about this song um it's not only about somebody that you loved yeah it's about someone that you worshipped like to an extreme amount where yeah. you would do anything for this person. Yeah. Is that something from you or is it something? I think everyone knows what it's like to, to want someone to be in their life and to not to have that person either walk away or just like to not have that person in your life. And it's such a painful feeling. It's so yeah. painful. And I think, I think I'm, I'm familiar. I'm very familiar with that feeling. Um, some of the details in the song, um, are fictional, I would say, it, it, but, but it's a mix. It's, it's a mix because the feeling for me, like I said, the feeling is primary and the feeling is always there when I write a song like this sort of this, um, severed love in a way, mm. uh, that that's always there. Now, sometimes I like to wrap it up in a way that I feel like more people can understand or might relate to more people. I think, I think a lot of people can relate to, to giving, giving everything to someone and then sort of just being like left high and dry basically it really takes you through the phases of a breakup like the first verse it's very soft yeah and you are mourning a relationship yeah you are mourning and you're feeling the, the, the loss of this person then you get to the hook and then the second verse is that next phase of the breakup and it's yeah. it's it's almost where you kind of flip it and you go oh it must be nice being a it must yeah. be nice not caring, but you also accompany that with percussion. And I feel like that adds a little bit of tension to it. Yeah. And then when it comes back around again, that third part revisits the first part. And it yeah. just shows the roller coaster that is in that tight space of a breakup. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just a lonely song. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, because at the end, I'm just alone singing the song. And like, without you here tonight, it just feels... I feel that when I listen back to the song, I feel this, this, this almost abandonment, just this loneliness. And I think in my, that's really the, the place that the song came from in my own life is just like, it, it is probably born from my own loneliness more than anything. It's, 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 um, yeah, I, I think that's what I would say.